Right, you're listening to Scotty McClue. We're live at the megaphone. What chance do you think there was of that woman having a degree? Do you not think she was talking out of her... <laughs> right, um, we've got Brad, who's in Atherton. Hiya, Brad. Dinky-doo, mate. All right, mate. Dinky-doo. Dinky-doo. How are you? I'm not too bad at all, Brad. Good. Um, it, just, I'm new to the show. I listen right. to it on a regular basis. Welcome to the programme, sir. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm actually South African. I've been living over in England for the last three years now. Well, you know I am Makulu the Sulu. <laughs> yeah, j- just a quick, I mean, I've been listening to the show basically the whole evening. And, I mean, I, I what, what, what do you think of it? Honestly. Well, um, it's, I've never been... Oh, I've never heard, listened to a show like this before in my life, really. I've done. I don't think anybody has. I think it's <laughs> unique in the world. I, I, I think so. Uh, it's not It's not very... Uh, you, well, you don't really get talk shows in South Africa in the sense that you do on radios over here. Um, but it, it, it's very much... It's, well, I enjoy it. That's all I can say. Yeah, good. That's the main thing. As long as you... And you get a smile. Oh, I, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> You make me laugh, mate. <laughs> Nothing uh, wrong with that. I beg your pardon? Nothing wrong with that. No, no. If you can't laugh in life, I think you've got a serious problem. Oh, a serious problem. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, but basically, I've just been listening. Uh, am I correct in saying that the conversation is about the D-Day? Yeah. No, well, the conversation actually started about remembrance. Right. And what we're talking about is... As so many people, certainly from the First World War, have almost gone, and so many people from the Second World War, um, should we start to phase out Armistice Day? Right. Because the war to end all wars, which was the 1418 War, the Great War for Civilization, it was called, and there was no point to it at all. Yeah. Right. It was just the, you know, unmitigated slaughter of the bulk of the young men in this country and, uh, you know, uh, our allies. Right. Dreadful, um, dreadful, dreadful carnage put about by the politicians because they couldn't get their act together. Also, it was an arms race. Yeah. You know, it was the result of an arms race. Yeah, that's right. Admittedly started by uh, the Kaiser's Germany. Right. But, I mean, you know yourself, coming from South Africa, you you've got all the history of... You know, Germany and Britain and, and all the rest of it. That's right. I, mean, it's, I try not to get too involved in politics. I mean, well, you're I think... quite right not to do so. It's, I mean, I'm not interested in politics. This is not a political program. I'm yeah. only pointing out, uh, you know, the failure of the politics in 1914-18 and also in 39-45. Yeah, yeah. You know, bad policy. And, I mean, Churchill was painted as such a great guy, but, you know, he was a, a a bit of an old fraud, really. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. You know, but he believed in what he was doing. He was an aristocrat, and uh, aristocrats at the time were as near to God as you could get in this country, and he believed what he was doing was right. But somebody should have put a stop to him. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It wasn't all sweetness and light. Yeah. But he was a remarkable politician he was an excellent politician and i used to say this as well about uh about baroness thatcher whether you liked her or not yeah. she was a very good politician and good politicians are quite entertaining but i think there's a time to draw the line yeah there, there's you know entertainment's one thing yeah. but uh, uh plunging your country into a ghastly conflict is another yeah well i mean south africa uh, I've lived there all my life. My dad, <clears throat> excuse me, my dad's originally from Surrey. My mum's parents are ris- originally from Glasgow. Excellent. Uh, so I've got a good mix breeding, like my renowned for fighting, etc. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, but besides the points, I mean, from a con- where I come, where I've grown up through apartheid era, um, I've never been a racist person by no means, and I get on well with basically any race that's out there. Um, but when you uh, what some people have been saying tonight and that, and then if I what, what, what I mean, I hope you I hope you don't mind me asking, but yeah. but what color are you? I'm, I'm white. Because we white. don't know on the radio. It's wonderful, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. You cannot have racism on the radio because you just don't know. 
That's it. Everyone's equal. I, I was just, I was, I was only asking because I was interested because it suddenly struck me, and this is the beauty of radio that, um, you know, we we didn't know what color you were when you were talking about uh, apartheid. Yeah, yeah. I was just it's, wondering what side of it you you experienced. Yeah, it's. I mean, my, my dad's a. a well, I say he's a very godly man. He's, he's a pastor, and my mum is also very involved with church, and that's, I'm, I'm sort of the black sheep of the family. But Not I'm at still, all. Don't let anybody tell you that. Yeah. I, I'm still, I, I don't, I'm not a church plus, girl. Plus, I plus black sheep are, are, are good looking. <laughs> yes. I hope so. <laughs> They're nice creatures. Yeah. But, um, you know, they've. My dad runs a, ch a church in a little town called Port Alfred, which I don't know if you know the town called Port Elizabeth in South Africa. Oh, Port Elizabeth, yeah. Yeah, that's where I was born. Um, Excellent. An hour and a half up the coast is an hour and a half drive. is a town called Port Alfred, and uh, my dad runs a church there. And he does a lot of work with the black people. Uh, you know, there's a lot of concern going on in South Africa at the moment uh, with the the black white and the blacks themselves fighting against each other and i fear for my dad's life every single day because he raises funds for them and helps them build uh, buildings in their their towns or what we call squatter camps in south africa and uh, you know you look at things in different parts of the world and you it's so in some countries it's so different to others um, and some people are so fortunate in this country and they don't realize it, whereas the background I've come from has been, you know, in two different worlds. Well, I, I, I never tire of saying that this country is better now than it's ever been. Yeah, but I, I, I'm, I'm not saying England's better than South Africa. I'm not saying South Africa's better than England in, in any way or form. I, I really enjoy England. Uh, the people have accepted me, you know, as, as one of their own over here. I work for a fantastic company. I won't mention their name, obviously. No, no. Um, but you yeah. see, it's interesting because where you live in the world depends obviously on your background and where you come from, but it also depends on the political situation in that country. Yeah. Because if, you know, the political situation of the climate in South Africa, yeah. uh, the climate, if you'll pardon my expression, I'm getting confused there, but if the political situation in South Africa, um, you know, was suiting everyone, then the climate would definitely suit so many people. Yeah, that's right. You know? But at the end of the day, it's... I mean, my nan and granddad moved out to South Africa. I think it was just just before the Second World War ended. I think it was 1948. Mm. Um, well, that's just after it ended. Sorry, just after, beg your pardon. Um... They went out there, and then obviously before that was the eighteen twenty settlers and all that. But it, it's in in fairness, it is their country. But at the same time, uh, and I don't mean to be, uh, I'm not even trying to be racialistic in any way now. But if maybe if whites hadn't gone there in the first place, what, where would the country be now? Well, I mean, uh, I don't it, want anyone to be offended. No, no, no. I mean, the country, the country would would be absolutely fine. It would be going on the same. You see, everyone says, "What if?" Ah, but what if? And what if not? Yeah. Um, now, it wouldn't. It wouldn't necessarily be any worse. It would just be different. Yeah. Do you but see? We still. Very, I mean, it's a third world country now, and I suppose it would still be a third world country if, if, if Well, all of South normal. Africa is far from third world. Yeah. Now, you know that. Yeah, but a lot of people... I mean, don't South Africa is a very powerful leading nation. Yeah. You know? I'm glad you think so. <laughs> a lot of people always sort of refer to us as third world. And since I've come in over here, it's sort of been drummed into me. Well, there's a tremendous amount of ignorance about peoples of the world and, and, and situations in countries of the world. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's not until you go and you experience these things that you know about it. Yeah, yeah. That's right. I mean, uh, fortunately, my sports got me over here in the first place, but... Um, You're you a know. sportsman? Yeah, well, I try to be. <laughs> Fantastic. That's what we want. Listen, my dear friend, I'm going to have to go. No problems. Uh, because uh, I've got so many people waiting to come on. Yeah, I'll phone you up soon again. Yeah, and lovely to talk to you. And, and a very warm welcome, I say. Thank you very much. Hey, dinky-doo. Dinky-doo, mate. Ta-ra now. Ta-ra now. There we are. What a nice lad.
Now, uh, give us a call as soon as you possibly can. You're listening to Scotty McClue's Megaphone In, and uh, we've got rather a lot to get through, so uh, I shall uh, I shall expect your call. There's no point giving you the numbers because the lines are jammed. Back in a sec. Scotty McClue's Late Night Phone 